time in Japan, the chicken was regarded as sacred. Using many kinds of selective breeding, the Japanese have produced chickens that look beautiful. And some make sounds that are highly prized. <laughs> Distinguishing the sex of a chick is an extremely difficult task. When the Japanese devised a method of doing so, they amazed the world and transformed the poultry industry. Japan is one of the world's largest consumers of eggs. A raw egg over rice is a simple, cheap and nutritious meal. Chicken meat, inexpensive and healthy, is also very popular. Chicken and eggs are an integral part of the food that the Japanese eat today. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is chickens and eggs. From birds admired for their beauty to distinctive cuisine, we'll see what chickens and eggs reveal about Japan's artistic sensibilities and food culture. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. My friend and I are here in Ueno Zoo, in the children's zoo, where you can see various indigenous Japanese breeds of chickens roaming around. This one is called a Tokenko, and as you can see, he's docile enough to hold in your arms, for now anyway. Chickens in Japan are appreciated for their aesthetic qualities. Some are even known as living works of art. Let's start off today's show with a look at the world of ornamental chickens. Selective breeding of ornamental chickens spread in the 17th century and led to the development of many distinctive Japanese chickens. 17 breeds are now designated as protected species. The chabo is a small, short-legged fowl. They're elegant little birds, sometimes referred to as walking birds. in cockfighting. The ukopke, with its soft fluffy feathers, hardly looks like a chicken at all. Also its skin, internal organs and even bones are all black. It's a pretty peculiar bird. Among these diverse Japanese chickens, one that's famous around the world is the onagadori. This bird's tail feathers are over five meters long. Some onagadori have tail feathers that reach 10 meters or longer. Chickens usually shed their feathers once a year. But about 200 years ago, thanks to a random mutation, a male chicken that did not shed its tail feathers was born. The feathers just kept getting longer and longer. Starting with this chicken and gradually improving its characteristics, more and more chickens with long tails were bred. To prevent the long, beautiful tail feathers from dragging on the ground, when the birds go outside, the owners always hold up the tails with great care. It's not just a chicken's appearance that can be admired. Some breeds are appreciated for their crowing. Crowing competitions are held in various places around Japan. Birds are judged on things like the duration and melody of their crows. The Tōtenko is a fine example of a long crowing rooster. The pure high tones of one single crow can last for 30 seconds. A breed called the Tomaru is known for its black feathers and full-throated crow. Seiji Chokki just loves these long crowing roosters. His favorite is a breed called the Koeyoshi. It makes a sound unlike any other rooster in the world.
this deep, low sound is nothing like the high, ringing crows of other breeds. The koyoshi closes its beak when it crows. It's almost as if it's growling. At low pitch crowing, I find it soothing. It soothes me. It's relaxing to hear it. It's not just about the duration. The low pitch and the way it expresses itself are also key factors. It's wonderful when a bird gets it right, but it's not easy. The key to appreciating a long crow is to keep your ears open for how it changes pitch. The pitch rises, peaks, and then begins its long fall. This is what aficionados look for. Chokki trains his birds in a rather unusual way. First, he places the koyoshi in portable wooden boxes, keeping them in darkness for several hours. When he removes the birds from their boxes, they think morning has arrived. Then he puts them up on practice platforms. In order to stir up the bird's competitive spirit, he places two koyoshi on platforms right next to each other. That kind of crowing is no good. The bird is still young, of course, but the crow is too short and the modulation wasn't good at all. These long crowing roosters don't always do what you want them to, and that may actually be part of their charm. The number of special Japanese chickens is shrinking. In Japan's urban residential areas, you can't let roosters crow at full volume. Also, chicken fanciers are aging, and there are fears of bird flu. This bird has the lowest crow in the world. People have been saying for 50 or 60 years that it would die out. But I was determined. So I started producing the eggs and raising the chicks. It took the time and effort of many people to create Japan's remarkable ornamental chicken breeds. But the challenges of preserving them are growing. Well, you can see now why they call the chubbo walking bonsai. Isn't he tiny? They have another special enclosure here for some of those long-tailed onagadori, and they've arranged a special visit for us to go and see them, so I shall say goodbye to our little feathered friend here now, and we'll move on. This is where we keep our onagadori. It's in here? Yes. Okay. So, let's have a look. Here you see the body of the bird. That's a pretty small room. Okay. And the tail is in here. Okay. The tail may get even longer, so there's plenty of room down here. It's kind of surprising to see a bird shut away in a cupboard like this, as it were. If it walks around outside, the tail will get damaged, so to prevent that, we basically keep it in this box here. Oh, so he just hops in around, huh? Well, it's pretty impressive, but the tail's not actually not as long as I was expecting. To extend the length of the tail actually requires a lot of time and effort, not to mention technique. Oh. At our zoo right now, we are indeed trying to make its tail get longer. So this breed doesn't automatically grow to that length. There's a lot of work involved in it as well, I see. Hmm. Even so, it's a pretty impressive looking bird. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on now and take a look at the long history of Japanese and their chickens. The ancestor of all modern chickens is thought to be the red jungle fowl of Southeast Asia. It's believed that domesticated versions of this bird arrived in Japan more than 2,000 years ago.
Chickens were long considered sacred because their crowing announces the dawning of a new day. A clay figurine in the shape of a chicken was discovered in the 6th century tomb of a Japanese king. Chickens also appear in Japanese mythology. Here is one story. Amaterasu Omikami, the Shinto sun deity, is angered by a brother's bad behavior. The deity hides in a heavenly cavern. With the sun hidden, the world plunges into darkness, resulting in widespread disaster. The other gods confer and decide to lure the deity out using the long crowing rooster of the eternal realm. In the year 675, a law was passed that dramatically changed Japan's relationship with poultry. Emperor Temmu's meat-eating prohibition. From April the 1st to September the 30th of each year, the eating of beef, poultry or any other meat was forbidden. The law was inspired by Buddhism, which discourages the killing of living things. April to September is the crop growing season, and it's thought that the prohibition was implemented to restrict the impure act of meat eating during this important period. Many other prohibitions on meat eating followed. For a long time, the Japanese rarely ate chicken meat. About 1,000 years ago, many aristocrats bred chickens for cockfighting. Initially, cockfighting was a method of fortune-telling, but it eventually spread to the common people where it became a form of entertainment. By the 19th century, fewer people hesitated to eat chicken. In fact, it was eaten more and more. Back then, chicken stewed in a pot was one popular dish. However, unlike today, chicken meat was a pricey delicacy. Ordinary people in Japan didn't eat much chicken until after the Second World War. Starting in the mid-1960s, the broiler chicken industry developed, producing huge supplies of low-priced chicken meat. In Japan today, the chicken has lost its sacred mystic. Instead, it has become a cheap, healthy and delicious food that the Japanese couldn't do without. OK, it's quiz time now. I'm going to show you a very popular dish called oyakodon, which translates literally as parent and child rice bowl. And you've got to tell me what you think is in it. OK, and here we go. It's chicken and egg on a bed of rice. And of course, the chicken is the parent and the egg is the child. And this one looks extremely good. I'm going to dig straight in. Um, Mm. That's delicious. The chicken's really tender. The egg is fairly firm underneath and sort of soft on top, like a really good scrambled egg. And the whole thing's flavored with, it's a slightly sweetened soy sauce based flavor. All right, I'm gonna eat some more of this. Before I do, let's um, move on and look at the relationship between Japanese and eggs going back into history. For a very long time, chicken meat was hardly ever eaten in Japan. Neither were eggs. But eventually, European traders introduced foods and sweets that used eggs. From around the 18th century, eggs were eaten widely in Japan. These cookbooks, published in 1785, have all sorts of recipes including a hundred that use eggs in some way. Some of the recipes are quite unusual. One example would be reverse yolk eggs. The positions of the yolk and the white of the egg are reversed. The recipe says, using a pin, make a hole in the shell of a freshly laid egg then pickle the egg in salted rice bran paste. 
After a few days, rinse and boil the egg and you'll have your reverse yolk egg. Professor Hajime Hatta of Kyoto Women's University tried to reproduce these reverse yolk eggs. At first, he followed the recipe in the book. But every attempt failed. So he came up with a different method, one that uses a stocking. A fertilized egg that has been kept warm for three days is placed in a stocking and he twirls it rapidly. The stocking acts as a centrifuge. Because yolk is heavier than white, the yolk is pulled to the outside of the egg. You also twirl the egg while boiling it. When Hatta did all this, he produced an egg with the yolk and the white switched. A reverse yolk egg. But how were these eggs made in the 18th century? That remains a mystery. Raising poultry used to be more of a sideline for farmers, but that all changed after the Second World War. Larger breeds of chicken, ones that could produce more eggs, were introduced. Poultry farms became much bigger. Let's look at the wholesale price of eggs in Japan over the past 60 years. In the mid-1970s, a spike in feed costs pushed egg prices up. But overproduction eventually pushed costs down again. Today, eggs are about the same price as they were in the 1950s. While many other commodities have soared in price, the cost of eggs hasn't changed. They're popular as a cheap and nutritious food. Japan is a world-leading consumer of eggs. The average person eats more than 300 of them a year. Because of Japan's strict hygiene management, there's no need to worry about salmonella. Japanese eggs can be eaten raw. And the Japanese do love raw eggs. The ultimate example is a dish enjoyed by Japanese of all ages. This is the town of Misaki in Okayama Prefecture. The restaurant's signature dish is raw egg over rice. A raw egg over hot rice seasoned only with soy sauce. This dish is as simple as it gets. The egg and rice with side dishes of miso soup and pickles is 300 yen. And there are three extra servings of egg and rice, a popular offer. Delicious! Misaki has a large poultry industry and this restaurant was set up to promote the town using its fresh, tasty eggs. The restaurant opened in 2008. On holidays, people may wait up to four hours to get a meal. For Japanese diners, raw egg over rice is a wonderful way to appreciate eggs' basic flavor. It's a dish they never get tired of. Here in the outer market, they have several shops that specialize in omelettes. Now, an omelette is something that most people make at home, but these ones are special. They're made as toppings for sushi. So when the sushi chefs come to the market to buy their fish, they can also pick up their omelettes. Now, this shop here has quite an array of different types. The ones that are used in sushi are plain, but they have, let's see, got crab, chicken, prawn, and a number of different other ones as well. And as you'll see, they're all in rectangular blocks, which is a little unusual for omelettes, perhaps. Hello. I see you've got quite a few chefs working in the back there, cooks uh, cooking the omelettes. Wow, and you've got a whole batch of these things. It's, it's amazing, it's almost like a car assembly bike. 
This is the most efficient way to cook omelettes, mixing manual and automated operations. Each of these omelettes uses about 10 eggs. In a whole day, how many eggs do you get through? Approximately 12,000 to 13,000 eggs a day. Here you can get things that have just been, well, just come straight out of the frying pan and eat them hot. And I'm going to have a little taste now. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Oh, that looks so good. Mm. Mm. It's very slightly sweet and it's flavoured with dashi, the soup stock as well. So you've got the taste of the egg plus all of that. It's really great. These days eggs can be bought everywhere and very cheaply too. And one of the main reasons for that is an amazing technique that was developed here in Japan. These chicks have just hatched from an incubator. On the day they are born, the chicks are separated by sex. A chicken sexer can sort male from female incredibly quickly. These specialists use a method that was developed in Japan. Some breeds of chicken have newborn chicks whose sex is impossible to identify just by looking at them. However, if you want chickens that lay eggs, you want only females. In the past, it took a month before poultry raisers could tell which sex a chick was. Being able to pick out the female chicks at birth saves money. This is Shigeru Kusano a veteran chicken sexer who's been on the job for 50 years. Today, he's sexing a breed called the Ukokke. Ukokke chicks are very small, so sexing is especially difficult. He uses a method called vent sexing. After causing the chick to release feces, the anal vent is pushed open. The chick's sex can be determined by the shape of the vent. However, it is small, and almost identical in males and females. In males, there is a slight trace of retracted sex organs. It takes a trained eye to make the distinction. These traces come in a thousand different variations. Sexing chickens demands extreme accuracy. It's a huge mistake to have a male amongst the females. For every thousand chicks, a sexer must make no more than three errors or the client will complain. Speed is also essential to minimize stress to a chick's body. While inspecting a chick with the left hand, the right hand is already grabbing the next chick. Each inspection should take one or two seconds, which adds up to 15,000 chicks sexed per day. What does it take to be a chicken sexer. The most important traits are patience and perseverance. Also, it takes a person with an inquisitive mind and you need nimble fingers. Japanese people tend to have these traits, so they are ideal for this work. Japanese researchers developed this method of distinguishing male and female chicks in the 1920s. The difference between the sexes is very subtle though, and researchers in other countries said that the method could never be implemented in the poultry industry. But in Japan, researchers worked together with managers of poultry farms, and before long the method had been introduced throughout the country. Japanese chicken sexers back then were the only people who had this technique. They were invited around the world to show off their remarkable skills. Their work brought foreign money into Japan, which was poor at the time. Kusano too worked as a chicken sexer in France and other European countries when he was young. There is only one institution in the country that trains chicken sexers. Students here spend five months studying the subject. Then they spend one to two years apprenticing at a poultry farm. After that, if they pass an exam, they can become licensed chicken sexers.
recently fewer people are applying to become chicken sexes. The work is seen as hard and monotonous. Finding the next generation of chicken sexes is a problem. Moreover, selective breeding programs have produced male and female chicks with different feathers, making them easy to sex. This has reduced demand for chicken sexes. However, for most of the chicken breeds used to lay eggs, vent sexing remains a necessary skill. And that means chicken sexes will still be in demand for a long time to come. It's interesting precisely because it's difficult. It spurs your curiosity. You use your experience to keep improving your technique all through your career. If you don't have that drive, you'll quickly lose your touch. That's what makes it fun. And chirp, 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 we leave you with this little guy who I'm not going to turn upside down, by the way. Of course, you'll find chickens and eggs all over the world, but as I was slightly surprised to find, Japan does have its own unique culture involved with them. You have unique breeds, unique cuisine, and even unique poultry raising methods. I think he's in a hurry to get away from me, actually, so let's say goodbye. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Next time, rain. Japan receives twice as much rain as the average country. It's an essential part of Japanese life, but it also presents various problems. We'll see how the Japanese view and deal with rain. Adori. This bird's tail feathers are over five meters long. Some onagadori have tail feathers that reach 10 meters or longer. Chickens usually shed their feathers once a year. But about 200 years ago, thanks to a random mutation, a male chicken that did not shed its tail feathers was born. The feathers just kept getting longer and longer. Starting with this chicken and gradually improving its characteristics, more and more chickens with long tails were bred. To prevent the long, beautiful tail feathers from dragging on the ground, when the birds go outside, the owners always hold up the tails with great care. Japan, the chicken was regarded as sacred. Using many kinds of selective breeding, the Japanese have produced chickens that look beautiful. And some make sounds that are highly prized. Seventeen breeds are now designated as protected species. The chabo is a small, short-legged fowl. They're elegant little birds, sometimes referred to as walking birds. ...used in cockfighting. The ukokke, with its soft, fluffy feathers, hardly looks like a chicken at all. Also its skin, Internal organs and even bones are all black. It's a pretty peculiar bird. Among these diverse Japanese chickens, one that's famous around the world is the Onaga. <coughs> Distinguishing the sex of a chick is an extremely difficult task. When the Japanese devised a method of doing so, they amazed the world and transformed the poultry industry. Japan is one of the world's largest consumers of eggs. A 
raw egg over rice is a simple, cheap and nutritious meal. Chicken meat, inexpensive and healthy, is also very popular. Chicken and eggs are an integral part of the food that the Japanese eat today. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is chickens and eggs. From birds admired for their beauty to distinctive cuisine, we'll see what chickens and eggs reveal about Japan's artistic sensibilities and food culture. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. My friend and I are here in Ueno Zoo, in the children's zoo, where you can see various indigenous Japanese breeds of chickens roaming around. This one is called a Tokenko, and as you can see, he's docile enough to hold in your arms, for now anyway. Chickens in Japan are appreciated for their aesthetic qualities. Some are even known as living works of art. Let's start off today's show with a look at the world of ornamental chickens. Selective breeding of ornamental chickens spread in the 17th century and led to the development of many distinctive Japanese chickens. <laughs> 